What's up everybody, Funnel Doc here. In today's video, we're going to be going over my onboarding process. This is one of the things that coaches, consultants, you know, agency owners, we all have onboarding processes that's repetitive. It's the same thing over and over. There are just certain variables that need to be switched out. Well, with this onboarding workflow, you're going to be able to get your invoices taken care of. You're going to be able to get your onboarding form sent out, your contract signed. You're going to be able to get everything tracked along the way. It's really cool. Um, you're going to love it. So I'll see you inside today's video. Peace. Okay, so we're in high level right now in the workflow section. This is really triggered off of three workflows, two I created, and one is the um, what they call a recipe for appointment reminders. Now, I will go through this. I have tweaked it and made it a little more to my liking on when they're sent out and how they're sent out and those type of things. But the two main ones here are um, these two that fires off an invoice sent and then when the survey sent. So I'll jump into this. Now, the first thing, for most businesses, there's two things that need to be done when you get a new client. You need to have them fill out their contract and you need to get them to pay you. You need to have them pay your invoice. So the first thing we're going to trigger off and later we'll have it for this to trigger also for contracts being sent out. But right now they can't be sent out. They have to be done on a third party like PandaDoc or Dubsado or whatever, you know, CR or like um, invoice or contract software you're using, use that very soon. I believe within 30 days or so, you will be able to do contracts uh, within high level. So that will be solved and we'll be able to add that as a trigger. But right now we're using invoice. So let's say we send the invoice. So the first thing we did is I went in and I created an invoice for a buck and I sent it to myself and paid it. So uh, for anyone who's curious, it's sort of what it looks like here for an invoice. Um, and then um, what you're going to do after that is once the invoice is sent, you're going to assign a person who makes the contract. So this could be anyone in this point. I just assigned me as a user so you could see the process here. Then you're going to send an internal notification. Again, these aren't fleshed out. I just made the whole workflow. I need to go through and put the actual emails and some notifications in here. But you're then going to get a notification. What that means is that when you log in, that little bell right there is going to pop, light up. And it's going to say, hey, whatever this notice is, you'll see that in a second, create a contact for their name. So then we've got uh, add task to create a contact. So that means that that person who's assigned, it's going to actually pop up as a task for them to do. So it reminds them, hey, create a contract for this person. The invoice is sent. We need other contracts created and sent out. Um, while that's all happening, a onboarding opportunity is going to be created. So the opportunity is going to look something like this. This is a very simple workflow for my onboarding. I've got the contract invoices sent out. Uh, in the workflow, it's going to recognize when the invoice is paid and when the contract is signed. We're going to use the contract being signed right now using zaps and tags. So that's going to be able to done, be done here. Then once these two are done, um, it will recognize that, send out the questionnaire. Once the questionnaire is done, it will then contact them using AI via the AI bot to actually schedule their onboarding call one-on-one -on -one with whoever the onboarding person. In this case, it's going to be me for this. But uh, for this demo, but for you, it'd be whoever your onboarding person is, uh, if you even have an onboarding call. Most people will. Uh, remember, when you're onboarding people in your coaching program, studies show that, that literally that white glove onboarding process can make all the predetermination of how much they're going to like your program, no matter what the content is sometimes. So make sure that initial onboarding process, especially for that high ticket, 5000 10000 above, is white glove because that can make all the difference, especially um, when they're first coming into your program. So anyway, here's your onboarding. Uh, you're going to bring them in. And, and you could have something like in other videos for my SaaS and stuff. You'll see I have a whole video series where they go through videos on onboarding of how to do this. And it watches them and knows when they've got past 95% of the video. It then shows them the next video. That's another video I'll be uploading to YouTube soon. But you'll see there's so much potential with these workflows when you know how to use them. So let's go ahead and jump on in this guy. Nick, so we create the opportunity. Then we're going to send the email. Hey, pay it, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, because they've invoice has been sent. We want it paid. So they'll have a little invoice um, email here. Just like be this one would be like sort of a reminder email. Um, you may or may not want to include this. Uh, you'll see then I have it wait for a day at this point to see if the email has been paid. Uh, we use what's called a condition or it's an if else statement if you're looking in your actual flow. So if you come in here and you click to add an action, and you type if in the search bar, you'll see this if else. These are the conditions that we make. Now, I highly recommend labeling everything. So even this email should be labeled. It should be email 
uh, reminder to pay. You know, the, all these should be labeled just because the better you label your workflow, the easier you're going to be able to find and see where stuff's being stuck or not working. And it's going to be way easier. I even recommend doing like I'm doing here is segmenting your workflows a little bit, because if you get these huge, just crazy long workflows, and this is a big controversy in the high level of the community, um, it's harder, in my opinion, to be able to problem solve. So I like keeping workflows smaller and simple making sure it works and then connect it to another one. It works just as well. So anyway, we're going to wait for a day. Then we're going to check. We're going to be like, status, has it been paid or is it just still sent? If it's still just sent and hasn't been paid, they're going to recognize it as the invoice has not been paid. Now, if it's been paid, obviously it's going to recognize it as paid. But let's just say right now that it didn't get paid. Next thing they're going to do is get the email that's, hey, you still need to pay me email. Again, we're going to be doing this nice. At that point, too, they're going to do a contract check because by now uh, it's been a day. We've waited a day. The contract should have been sent out by the person that got tasked. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Let's test this little workflow right here. We're going to put this in here. We're going to little, run a little test on it. Save everything, make sure we're good to go. Now, what should have happened is they should have assigned me, the funnel doc is that, I should be getting a notification. So let's do a little refresh here just to check it out. And so you'll see here, if we look where they were supposed to make a, a task, you'll see right here that up oh, a task has now been made and been assigned. The value, contact, Jeff Bannock, assigned to the funnel doc here, and it's due in a day. So this is the reminder that we're looking at that's been given in here so far. Now, um, then they will have also the, of course, the board has been made here. Uh, it won't make a duplicate board. So that's why you won't see, even if I refresh it, you'll see another one, the card right there. Uh, I left that setting off. So that way there's no duplicate. So it'll always be the same one. Um, and then the next thing we're looking at is the email to pay, which I'm sure if I check my email, yep, here's the email right here. Boom, email's been sent. It says pay it <laughs> again. And these are just placeholder emails I have it. And then there's the pay it one. You'll see. And then so we will wait for a day. Now, if we refresh this, you'll see I'll be at the wait stage. This is something you need to know that um, when you refresh a workflow, you can see where people are in it. And you'll see now if I'm stuck at a stage, boom, I'm at the wait for a day. So then they'll come through and check to see next was invoice paid in 24 hours from now. If it didn't get paid, we're going to get the paid email. They're then going to check to see if the contract signed. Now, in this instance, you're going to see where you have tags here signed and then didn't sign contract. I don't know if you can see that with my picture in a way, but then we've got two different tags. Now, if it signed the contract, obviously it's going to go sign contract, didn't sign. And then if it goes to the didn't sign, that means it didn't pay the invoice. It didn't kind of sign the contract. It's going to go back up here, wait a day, go through the process again, send them both those emails out. Um, to try and get paid um, and to get them to sign the contract. Now, um, usually in my experience, if someone's supposed to sign something and they haven't done it in 48 hours, uh, there's usually something going on other than they just didn't sign it, but who knows. But this is just a way they can keep them in the loop. Now, let's say that they didn't pay their invoice, but they did sign their contract. They're going to get a thank you for signing it. It's going to update it, so it's going to move it from here to the contract sign. You'll see the invoice isn't paid yet, but the contract has now been signed and then it's going to go back up to the top here. It's going to wait. It's going to check the invoice paid. If it didn't, it's going to keep looping through here. The didn't and did sign until it finally does pay it. Once it's paid, they'll get the thank you. It'll update it um, to the actual one right here where it says invoice paid. Now it will check the contract signed. The reason why we have to check it again over here is because they could have paid the invoice right off the bat. And then we need to check still if the contract signed, where here we're assuming they didn't pay the invoice yet. So we check to see if the contract signed again. We go through, didn't sign the contract, et cetera. They go through the loop, same type of loop that we have over here. Uh, here I added the one day wait here rather than at the top because we're waiting for two possibilities. This possibility, once they do sign the contract, that means they did pay their invoice, they did sign the contract. They're gonna then get their updated, their opportunity updated again to the a questionnaire sent. You're going to see they're going to get an email that's going to say fill out the questionnaire and then you have your actual questionnaire it would be uh, sent out in that email. Um, and then they're going to check has this survey. Now you're for your questionnaire, I recommend using a survey because it's very dynamic compared to using a form. I think those work better, um, but it's really up to you. You can use a survey here or the other one. So the way that I decided to see if this worked because I couldn't find actual trigger to be like, well, 
had they filled out a form because or a survey because they use that action is a trigger they don't use it as an actual action throughout the workflow so i had to be a little sneaky so i'm like well what can i do and i found that if the i made another workflow and the workflow is triggered the second you fill out your survey so if you're in this workflow and you fill out your survey you start the second workflow so now if i come here and i look i'm like if it's if this contact which is you are active in the survey sent which is the other workflow it's going to go over here and know that you completed the survey because it's been sent, or at least it's been sent. You know what I mean? And then at that point, um, it should probably say instead of survey completed, it should be probably a survey been sent. Or, or no, completed. We're checking to see if it's been completed because once they completed in the other one, sorry, it's completed in the other one, uh, they're going to do it. So this one, you look, if he's not active in the survey sent, um, you're going to see they're going to wait a day. They're going to be like, hey, email, finish it, loop it again, just normal loop. Now, we'll look at the other one, and you're going to see here to where they have the onboarding survey sent. And it's going to see if it's submitted. We should probably, instead of say sent, call this onboarding survey submitted so it's just not as confusing. Uh, because it's really not about it being sent. It's about it being submitted. And the cool thing is, is everywhere else that, that you saw that referenced, it will change now to submitted instead of sent, just so it's better. But it's really what it is. So it's checking now. The trigger is, was this onboarding survey uh, completed here or submitted? Once they recognize that, you'll get one saying, hey, now the survey has been some completed. Now we've gone from our survey to our last step, which is going to be the actual onboarding call. The thing is, we do need the phone number for someone to be able to get the AI bot to be able to work. So we have to check. Do you have your phone number? So we're going to right here, we're going to ask them, thanks for your onboarding. You know, this would be a uh, confirm and then we're going to confirm, do we have their phone number? And we can check that phone number is not empty, which means there's something in the phone number slot. And since it can rec only take phone numbers, it, it's got to be a phone number. Might not be theirs, but it's a phone number. And then you've got the phone number is empty, which means if the slot's empty, then we don't have their phone number. Pretty easy way to do an FS th statement here. So we don't have a phone number. We send them, hey, yo, we don't have your phone number. The cool thing is you can put in this email. And just reply to this email, and with high level, the second their phone number is typed anywhere in the commenting system, like it could be in Facebook Messenger, it could be an email, it could be an SMS. Well, not SMS because you've already got their phone number then, but it will automatically upload their phone number to that contact. So you could literally say, hey, just reply to this email with your phone number, and we'll have you automatically up added to our database. So then our bot will send you a text message, and we'll get your appointment booked right away. And then I've got it already opened up here so you can sort of see what it looks like. And here you can read it here if you want. It's like, do you have, uh, I, and I put this text in here. You can literally make it say anything. I was like, do you want to book an appointment? And then I just replied, yes, uh, yes, I do think, I did, thanks. And then it's like, here are some available dates. And you'll see it has all the different dates available right there. What day works best for you? And I was like, Thursday's good. And the cool thing is with this AI, they could pretty much say anything and it will recognize and be able to still book the appointment. So I was like, Thursday's good. And it's like, here are some openings Thursday, the 27th, 9 a.m. And it gives me, you can see right here, the different times. And I'm like, and I just replied like nine. And that's all I said. It's like, yes, that's available. Should we book the Thursday, 27th at 9 a.m.? And I'm like, yes. Sound, and then it replies back, sounds good. And I have you down for... The time. And then if you see right here, if we go into the calendar, you'll see there I am booked on the 27th at 9 a.m. Booked into the calendar automatically. And then um, and then it, all, it, it also has got my confirmation here of the text message I sent out for the payment of the dollar for the invoice on here, too, which is pretty cool. So um, but that's so you can see the communication. So now we've gone through. We've auto booked their appointment. We've, we first of all got the client in. We've got them in the contract. We got them paid. We've got their onboarding form, which is really big for me for my uh, funnel clients and stuff. You know, we've got a long onboarding form just so we can know your all about your avatar, your your offer. You know, everything you really need to know so that we can help to build out and do the research needed to be able to build out amazing funnels and funnel ecosystems. So if you're curious about any of this, you know, there is a link down below also for my uh, Funnel Doc AI program where we're going to be doing um, done for you services for all the bots and everything that I'm building out. So if you'd like to have any type of AI integrations or automations in your business, schedule a call for a discovery call and we'll talk about what we can do, what your business is and how we can get AI into it. 
Thank you so much. I also have a digital marketing group slash AI group. The link's down below. It's a Facebook group. We do uh, AI. I do AI trainings. We talk about AI. I'm always doing uh, videos on the constant and the most updated stuff in there as well. So thanks again for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, we'll lock out. Peace. Yeah.